Hi, everyone. Welcome to the new show, my new vegan cooking show. I'm so excited to do this. Um, so if you're here watching this live, I'm saying hi to you. If you're watching um, later as a replay, also, hello. Um, a couple words about myself. I'm Alina Zaratsky. Um, I am the creator of Vegan Runner Eats, a website about uh, vegan lifestyle and recipes and food and everything that helps people interested in going vegan make their transition easier. And uh, today I'm so excited to do this first live show, uh, live cooking show. I've had an idea for uh, doing something like this for a while, but um, like like with anything, something big and new that you don't know how to do yet, um, you just always end up, you know, like overanalyzing. And uh, so I kept putting it away for like over a year, but like a couple of weeks ago, I thought, all right, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to do it. If it's not perfect, it's not perfect. It's whatever. Anyway, um, can you guys hear me? If you, uh, can you just write yes in the comment or plus or anything? I, I want to make sure I see the commands working too, because this is a new software for me. I'm not sure yet. Can you hear me? All right. Anyway, so today um, I, so I, I asked people who are subscribing to my um, email list and people on Instagram who follow me. Hi, Carolyn. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, so I asked you folks about like, what would you like to, me to cook uh, for this first episode? And there were two options. So one of them was uh, soy curl fajita filling with peppers and onions. And another one was uh, like a breakfast burrito with a tofu scramble and breakfast potatoes. And um, so the polls went for a couple days and were really, really close. And as of this morning, that soy curl fajita filling has won by, I don't know, just like three or four votes. Anyway, so that's why I'm going to make this today. Uh, so in case you're, I'm just going to show you this big bag of soy curls that I'm going to use. They're by uh, Butler, the, the brand. I'm not sure if they're the only ones making it. I've never heard of any other brands making soy curls. So all right, maybe they are the only ones in the U.S. I know that they are located in Oregon. <clears throat> it's like a small mom and pop um, company, you know, nothing like huge like Amazon or whatever. I mean, they do sell them on Amazon, and uh, I'll try to remember to put a link down below so you can go and see them on Amazon. But you can also find them in uh, health stores. Like you don't always. Oh, yeah. Is that right, Carolyn? Okay. All right. Well, good to know. Yeah, so have you ever done anything with soy curls, guys? Um, I've been cooking with them for, I don't know, a few years now. And this is one of my uh, favorite recipes, actually, what I'm going to do today, because it's super easy and it's super flavorful and it's also super versatile because you can make this uh, filling, soy curl filling for tacos, fajitas, burritos. You can make like a grain bowl as a side. Great for meal prep if you want to do that. You can advance, uh, separate, like portion it out and like eat all week. Um, so I think we'll just go ahead and start. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do now, the soy curls are dry. I'm going to open this bag and I'm going to soak them in hot water, which I of course, forgot to boil. So I'm going to do it right now. I filled it up, but I forgot to boil. All right, anyway, I hope it's not going to be too loud. All right, so I'm going to cut, cut the bag open. Oh, you know what? Actually, I uh, I have another camera. So I, I want to do like, you know, like two cameras. Uh, you'll see what, what I'm talking about so that you can see. All right, you see? Okay, so this one, this one, uh, okay, I guess you see them both. But anyway... The second camera is on my phone, and I want to set it up so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, 
let's see. There's like this kind of layout. We can also do this. I like can make this bigger. Which one do you prefer, guys? Do you like this one? So this is like number one. Or do you like this, number two? Just let me know. I'm, I'm going to do start with this, okay? Because I, I don't think you need to see my face as much as you need to see what I'm doing over here. Anyway, so I'm going to... I've got my soy curls over here. I'm going to... You know what? Let me see what happens if I move on. Oops. On the other side. Maybe... Because the light... Like I'm not happy with how the light was going. Yeah, I think that's a little better. Is it? All right. Anyway, so I've got my little bowl here. I'm going to pour my soy curls. I'm going to do probably about a half a bag. Okay. Yeah, that's about half a bag. It's it's quite a lot. You know, this uh, this is eight ounce, but when rehydrated, they come to uh, one and a quarter pounds. So that's there. See, so right there. Yeah, so, so this should be a good amount. Anyway, so there we are. And I'm going to wait for my hot water. It doesn't have to be boiling, so I think I'm going to turn it off in a second. Um, another thing I want to say that it's optional, but I really like it. Uh, because they are like quite similar to chicken in texture, uh, once they are rehydrated and cooked, I like to add this stuff right here better than bouillon, no chicken base. Uh, about a tablespoon to the water. You'll see once we once we start doing it. So this uh, cr basically creates like a chicken broth that they soak up and they soak up the flavor that way too. Which like once you cook them, they just come out a little more flavorful. But you don't have to do it if you don't want to, um, because uh, you know if you just put salt and pepper and other seasonings, it'll <clears throat> it'll be flavorful enough. Uh, anyway, so this right here, I used to buy on Amazon because it was really hard to find in stores. But lately, even like I've noticed that even like very much like regular non-vegan, no, non-special stores, like grocery stores uh, here in the U.S. have uh, have been carrying this. So I think this one, this jar I bought in the store. Anyway. Okay. All right. So... Let's go ahead and pour our hot water over the soy curls. And I'm not really measuring how much. I'm just going to make sure that most of them are covered. Yeah, something like this. Okay. Next up, I'm going to get my no chicken uh, bouillon. It looks like this. This is probably like roughly like a tablespoon or so you can add a little more a little less but just be aware that it's really salty so if you're, if you're watching your sodium then you know it's probably better to use less than more and you can kind of see that it's i don't know if the light is good enough for you to see here or not but it's getting kind of yellow to the broth itself see and it dissolves really easily Okay, so there we go. We're going to just leave them alone. They rehydrate really quickly. So like, I could go ahead and start cooking cooking them about now. But anyway, we're just going to let them sit for a little bit. Next, um, we've got our onion and pepper. These will be, well, because the name of the recipe is fajita filling with peppers and onions. So that's what we've got, basically. And I didn't bring my knives, but I'm going to go get my knives here. Anyway, so I'm going to peel and uh, cut up the onion and cut up the, the pepper. Anyway. Yeah, this morning I went to the grocery store after I dropped my uh, daughter at daycare. We are having bad weather coming our way. It's going to be uh, another winter storm, which we just had one last weekend. But it was like the first snow of the season. I live in um, eastern Virginia, so the weather here isn't like as 
you know, robust in the winter as in say Minnesota, but still, you know, so at 9 a.m. the store was packed and I was like, wow, you people get up early. Anyway, so I'm going to cut it in half and uh, just trimming both sides of it a little bit. I'm putting it the stuff in the garbage. And next, how I'm going to slice this onion, each of the two halves. I'm going to um, slice them in half moons, which is I'm going to like insert the knife at an angle and just going around. So it's kind of like wedges, sort of. Can you guys see it? I hope you do. All right. And one more. And the second one as well. This is how I cut onions for stir fry, like any kind of Asian style dishes, um, because I just find that the, when they're thicker, like instead of like being thin, they can char nicely, cook nicely like on the surface, but the wider inside part lets them just stay nice and juicy and crunchy, uh, as opposed to like if you slice them thin and then it's just, you know, cooked up, you know, too overcooked and it's not crunchy or tasty like that. All right, so now I'm just separating this stuff. And what I, there's something yucky on that one. No, no problem. Anyway, oh, it looks like I need a, a bowl to put this in. Let me see, let me see. Oh, here's a bowl. Here we go, I'm going to just put this all in here. I'm using um, a Santoku knife. This is this kind of shape. shape. It's by J.A. Henkels or Zwilling. Like they are kind of like the brand that's interchangeable. Um, or maybe Zwilling is the part of Henkels or Henkels is a part of Zwilling. Uh, we just bought these um, around Thanksgiving and I really love them because they're really sharp. They handle really easy and just, just great. Anyway, next up, we've got our pepper. The pepper I'm going to slice uh, about in half. That's my garbage. I'm not going to need any seeds, so I'm going to get all these parts out. All the seeds. So nice. See, it's just a half, a pepper half. Same with this. I already see some some seeds jumping on the on the floor, so I'll have some extra cleanup after I'm done, but all right, that's fine. All right, next up, we can uh, slice them a little thinner. And I'm going to make just these long strips, fairly thin, but not so thin that they're like, you know, like thin as spaghetti, think of them like, like fettuccine pasta, thick, but not spaghetti pasta, thin. Okay, and this we will just put in the same bowl as the onions and let them sit. You know what, before I start slicing these, I'm going to get my frying pan and put it on the stove to start getting, heating it up. All right, so we got this frying pan. This is, um, I, let me see, show you. There. No, sorry. This right here is uh, a Ninja, actually, nonstick frying pan. And I really love that. For a long time, I used Anilon pans, but unfortunately, I think the quality has started kind of going down. So, like, I got this set of two analon pans about a year ago and within a month i could see like lots of scratching but this i've been using for about four months now and it's can you see it's just good as new and it's also hard it's hard anodized um no teflon so it works really well i don't use any metal uh utensils 
So I, I'm sure that helps, but like, Ninja makes good stuff. So, <laughs> all right, there we go. Let me see, do I need to light it up? Oh, we'll see. Okay. So we're starting to preheat the pan. And next up, I'm going to do the rest of the pepper. I'm trying not to cut my fingers because these knives are so sharp that last week I cut my my thumb a couple weeks ago. I cut my thumb so bad that I was making like pizza, <laughs> and I was trying really hard not to like bleed all over my vegan pizza because you know it wouldn't be vegan in that case. All right. Anyway, so we got our vegetables, peppers, and onions. We will set them aside, and we will go back to soy curls. Wow, they really sucked sucked up all that water. See? Yeah, they're nice and plump. Some of them are quite long. I think we'll break them up a little bit once they're in the pan. Whoa, that's really big. All right. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to add a little bit more water in here. And I'll show you why. The reason is that I'm going to cook the soy curls in this broth and let the broth evaporate. This way, we will make sure that whatever flavoring we put in from the stuff, from better than bouillon stuff, that it will, you know, stay in there as opposed to like if I was just to take them out and squeeze them and, and fry them, then there'll be a lot of broth that I just have to throw out, you know, I don't want to waste it. So we're going to cook them in this way. And I'll show you uh, how I make, how I make sure to uh, the, get the texture just perfect every time when I cook soy curls, perfect, like comparing to the texture of grilled chicken, for example. Like if I, I, I haven't had chicken. I haven't in years. I've been vegan almost nine years this year. Um, but I mean, once you have it, you probably never forget. So, and I've actually heard from uh, blog readers that they've made this dish for meat eaters and they, they were amazed, just blown away at how close to the texture and flavor of chicken this was. Anyway. Let me see. It's getting there, but not yet. All right. Well, what else are we going to do? So we can do, once we make our uh, filling, we can either, uh, sorry, I'm just playing with this stuff. Okay. Uh, we can either make like, tacos or fajitas, or we can wrap them up in a burrito or we can make like a grain bowl. So like opportunities and possibilities are endless. Can you please let me know in the comment, what would you like me to do? Once it's all done, would you like a taco, a burrito or a grain bowl? Or maybe you have your own ideas and you know, because you know, this way we will see which way we're gonna go on from here. Okay, anyway, let's see. This is getting a little hot, so I'm gonna, switch back to my big camera this one and switch them around i'm going to take my phone over to where my stove is let me see yeah i think you guys can see it all right good next up can you hear me okay this way i just want to make sure that you know i don't just keep talking you don't hear me very well. All right, I'll, I'll keep like looking back here to make sure you see me. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of oil, but I know a lot of folks are like, especially if you're went vegan for health reasons, a lot of folks don't prefer not to use oil. Uh, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, but I don't usually use a ton of it, but when I do, it's for things like, like to get a little bit extra crispiness, a little bit extra crunch. So my cooking oil of choice is avocado oil. Or should I show it to my cell phone? Yeah, 
avocado oil like this. I got this giant thing at Costco. Um, it lasts forever, basically. Why I'm using avocado oil is because, um, sorry, playing with my stuff. Uh, avocado oil has a very high uh, smoking point, which means you can heat it up and it won't start smoking. But why sm smoking is, you know, not good for oil? It's because once the oil starts smoking, like if you heat it up too high, then it means that it's getting bad. Like the chemical processes start where the components of it start breaking down. And sometimes like some bad stuff can happen. Uh, like there may be some carcinogens or whatnot. Um, yeah, but avocado oil, I think you can heat it up to, yeah, it says that uh, high heat, 500 degrees. Oh, I forgot my, all right. And I'll get this eventually. All right, here we go. So, yeah, you see, 500 degrees. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of, a, of, of oil over here. A little bit. If you don't want to use oil, perfectly fine. Just make sure that your uh, skillet is, you know, pretty well, uh, like non-stick, because you don't want to struggle with getting all the little bits stuck. All right, feels hot enough. So now I'm going to put all the soy curls in there with the broth and it's probably going to be loud but maybe for over there maybe you won't hear this bad but anyway okay. all right so this is what's what's happening yeah so i'm going to cut up like longer pieces to make it a little shorter you don't have to, but I, I just think that it's nicer when they are all about the same length. That there aren't any like super long noodle like pieces. All right. Okay, so there we go. So we're gonna just leave it there on medium heat for a little bit. Um, yeah, I'm gonna switch the cameras to make sure. All right, here we go. Yeah, just letting it cook to make sure that the broth, the liquid, evaporates. And uh, as it starts evaporating, when the pan starts getting dry, the surface of the soy curls will start crisping up. So what we, we will have is that the chickeny flavor will be inside the soy curls, inside of each of soy curl. But the crispy, you know, the layer that nice tooth something will be on the outside and i think it's just that's great after they are done what we're gonna have we're gonna uh take them off the pan out of the pan and we will put our pe peppers and onions to cook in there for just maybe like two three minutes this way and the pan will be very hot i'll probably turn up the heat this way um they will crisp up and get the nice char on the outside in a few spots but inside they will stay nice and crispy or crunchy <laughs> yeah yeah so that's what we're gonna do so next up what we're gonna do well we've got some greens i've got some cilantro and some green onions this will be the very last step that we'll be adding them. Here, I'm gonna bring my camera over here so you can watch me. There we go. All right, so I'm going to just, you know, chop them roughly. I know that a lot of folks don't like cilantro and apparently there is like some kind of gene, some recessive gene that some of like 10% of people have that makes some component in cilantro taste like soap to them and yeah that's that's no fun i think my mom might might have that 
although she she's never complained if I made something with cilantro. Um, yeah, I don't need it by itself, but I do add it to quite a few of my things. My mother-in-law, actually, if you're watching me, hi, Ro. Yeah, she actually likes the salads that I make, like dinner salads, just vegetables and sides out. Whenever she comes to visit, I make the salad and uh, she always says, oh, that's so nice. I like the cilantro in it. Or maybe she's being polite. Either way, I love her very much. Now we're going to do the onions. I'm going to cut them in half and just slice or what's the proper way to call it chop dice no that's definitely not dice because they're round and not cubicle all right there we go so we can just set it aside for a while let's go check on our soy curls all right well so they're boiling quite nicely. There. You can see that there's already quite a bit less liquid left in there. They're really plump. Like you can definitely see how plumped up they got. All right. So another probably minute or so and the liquid will evaporate all the way and they will start to crisp up and this actually is a recipe where you can cook soy curls or onions uh, peppers and onions like in either um, that direction what's the word like either way you can either make soy curls first and then peppers and onions second or you can make peppers and onions, and then soy curls. Because at the end, they all both come together and we just reheat them. Whatever component was sitting out while the second one was cooking, they, it heats up and we add the greens and some seasonings. And it's just going to be lovely. I guess you'll have to trust me. Or I, I think I forgot to say that actually this recipe is on my blog. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes, it is. I will put the link to it in the show notes below once this is over and once I figure out how to how to do that. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, it's one of the, the first recipes on my blog. I probably no, not first. No, well, not number one. Maybe like number twenty. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> All right. So let's check. Our soy curls, I can already hear them, that they are like, sizzling a little differently. So let's see. All right, yep. The liquid is all out. Now we're just going to stir them a little bit and let them cook undisturbed for a minute or two. Yeah, this way they'll start developing that, you know, some crispy layer on the outside. I, you know what? I think I forgot to put out the spices that I put in this at the end. So usually with spices, um, like to be honest, I don't really measure out spices when I cook. When I write recipes, yeah, I do. But then I can make that recipe many, many times over and I will just kind of eyeball it. So for this kind of dish, since it's like, you know, Tex-Mex style, spices like cumin and chili powder, and maybe chipotle work very well in paprika. Chipotle you can add if you want to make it spicier. If not, then just skip it. Like I know that my husband doesn't really like spicy stuff and neither does my daughter, but I do. So like if I'm cooking that by myself, which I'm not going to cook a whole pan for myself, for myself, but if I do, then I would add some chipotle. If I make it, you know, for all of us to eat, then I won't add chipotle. I'll add other things, but um, 
I can just put some hot sauce like sriracha or you know, Tabasco on my tacos or in my burrito when I'm eating it. All right, let's see what's happening with the soy curls. Yay, I think there's some progress. Yep, there's some. Let me see. Can you guys see it? I'm gonna show it to my other camera too. Yeah. Come on. There we go. Can you see how it's getting a little bit, you know, like cooked like nicely, crispy, crunchy. And if you have time, like if you're making this dish and you started making it early, like your dinner is an hour, hour and a half, and you're already making it, you can actually do this for quite a while. Like your know, soy curls, like once the liquid <clears throat> cooks out, but you know that, you know, you still have quite a long time to go. You can just add more water. I wouldn't suggest more water with uh with this stuff because it would just make the finished soy curls too salty you, you don't want that but just regular water it doesn't have to be hot it just you know drinking water from a cup you can just splash them i mean maybe don't do that i know maybe it's not super sanitary but still actually like, so water evaporated just add some more let that evaporate and then add some more and then when you see all right dinners like 20 minutes from now okay i can let it the water cook out and then go and do that you, you know let them cook without water get them nice and crispy okay switch my cameras <laughs> soy curls another thing is that if we're cooking them this way you can make them this way for a lot of things like it doesn't necessarily have to be just like this recipe like fajita filling you can cook them like that and use them as chicken substitute in just about anything you know you can like cool them and chop them and make chicken salad with them i think we should try that sometime actually yeah or like I don't know. If you are putting them in liquid stuff, like making soup with them, then just be aware that no matter how crispy, like chewy you get them, and you get the surface, they will take up more liquid and they won't be as like crispy and chewy. They will get like very, very tender if you put them in, in a soup. So... And even with this, I sometimes, like at this stage when I'm making dinner, I'm like, I've got 22 things going on. Like maybe I'm listening to a podcast. My kid is asking for a snack and, you know, all kinds of things. So I sometimes forget to go stir them and they get a little bit overdone. But actually, it's the nice thing about them is that you really have to like forget about them for an hour before they go really bad, you know. So you can get them a little bit chewier than you think you should if you forget about them. It's, it's fine. All right, switch more cameras again. Good. Yeah, I can definitely see that I was talking to you so long that some of the parts started burning, but it's okay. Like I said, it's, it's not easy. Here, this one. Can you see it's getting a little bit? It's not gonna, not gonna really make a huge difference. By the way, um, health-wise, 
if you are concerned about like charred things, like charred vegetables, like as I told you, like we're gonna cook these till they are a little bit charred or the soy curls get a little bit charred. Like, is it bad for our health? Well, maybe it's not as good as a, you know, plain lettuce leaf, but it's definitely not nearly as bad as if that was real meat, if we were cooking it and it got charred. Because when meat, like the animal flesh cooks, that charring thing, especially it's especially bad on the grill because, you know, everybody likes to cook their meat till it's all charred. So that stuff contains these really bad carcinogens. Uh, I'm not a doctor, so like you, I, I suggest that you go and you know do your own research on that. But uh, there are these compounds called heterocyclic amines and uh, what's the other one? Hydrocarbons, uh, some aromatic hydrocarbons, something like that. So that stuff only develops in cooked meat on the surface of the cooked meat when it's like nice and charred. And so that stuff is just, you know, bad news for you. So if you're vegan for health or just happen to be vegan and health is like a nice bonus, so high five, you're doing well. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. All right, so I'm going to set this aside. Just put them back in the same bowl that I was using earlier. It's a little bit wet, but no biggie, honestly. Okay. I'm going to return this back to, and can you see how pretty they are? I think they're pretty good like that. Okay, so I'm going to set them aside and now I'm going to put a little bit more oil and uh, get those peppers and onions in. All right, so it sizzles right away. This the little piece of soy coral that stayed in, you can see that it's sizzling. So in go our peppers and onions. And let's get them. Okay. So if we want them to get a little bit charred, on the edges, why I'm so obsessed about it because I think it just tastes so good when you put it on a tortilla and or a burrito, and just you know, just extra deliciousness. So in order for that to form, we need to put them on a very hot skillet and just let them sit there without stirring for at least a couple minutes, two three minutes. Because if we keep stirring them, then they will be cooking evenly, and as a result they won't uh, develop that nice charring. They just won't have enough time to sit in contact with the pan. So we're gonna do that. And I was talking about spices earlier. So once peppers and onions are ready, I'm going to put the soy pearls back in and toss them up. And I'm going to put some uh, spices. So I'm going to put cumin, um, oregano, if you have Mexican oregano, that's even better. Mexican oregano is a little stronger, but regular oregano is fine too. Cumin, oregano, um, chili powder, and paprika. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that stuff in my spice cabinet. Let's paprika, oregano, oh, I should. Sorry, switch my cameras again. All right, so paprika, oregano, cumin, and chili powder. 
chili powder can be, um, you can find spicy chili powder in stores or you can buy find mild, whichever you prefer. I usually buy mild because like I said, not everybody in my family enjoys spicy stuff. Anyway, so now I'm going to toss peppers and onions, see if there's any kind of charring. Oh yeah, yeah, very nice. All right, so I don't know if you guys can see it. I'll see if you can show. Wait, it's a little bit. See, there's little black or brown bits there. That's where all the flavor is. So from there, I'm just gonna do another minute tops because if I keep them longer, they will start cooking and they'll just turn to cooked peppers and onions. And I remember I want to keep them nice and crispy on the inside and just for the nice mouth feel. Okay, so I'll get just my our spices. Oh, um, thank you, Carolyn. That's very nice of you. Um, um, so, so what are we doing? Do we want to do tacos? Do we want to do a burrito or do we want to do a grain bowl? If you have an opinion, then put it uh, in the comments. Okay. And I will do that. I will, I'll make that because for me, it's either way you can do it for grain bowl. I think I have some leftover rice, so that, that should count. Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, Put the soy curls back in. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, I'm just gonna taste one. Mm, yeah, you're gonna definitely feel the nice flavor coming through, the chickeny flavor. I think it's perfect. I'm not even gonna put any more salt and pepper, and maybe some black pepper, but salt, it doesn't need salt at all. All right, I think this looks really good. I'm gonna let it heat through a little bit. We're not gonna cook this for a very long time because if we do, then because there's so much stuff in the pan now, the peppers and onions will start steaming instead of getting you know charred and crispy. And once they are steaming, then they won't be as crispy anymore. I probably said the word crispy a million times, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, and now I'm going to put the spices in and switch my screen. I'm not really measuring, I'm just looking at, you know, whatever looks good. But if I was to measure, I would do like a teaspoon of paprika, teaspoon of cumin and half a teaspoon of oregano and chili powder. So something like that. But if you do different proportions, actually it's no biggie, it'll all taste good. Okay, so we got, this is paprika, this is chili powder, oregano, and and cumin okay so i'm not going to toss it all together it looks so good doesn't it and now i'm going to actually turn off the heat and put my greens in my chopped greens Okay. And you will see that it will looks look really, really nice. Oh, so nice. Wow. Good. Okay. Let me just a little bit closer. Good stuff, isn't it? Okay, let me show it to you on the big camera. Where is 
piece of thing. Here we go. All right, hopefully I won't dump this all over my laptop keyboard. <laughs> but anyway, pretty good, right? Okay. All right, so I'm thinking I'm just going to go the easy way. I'm just going to make some tacos with it, okay? For that purpose, I'm going to... I don't think we need the second camera right now, but so we'll just do this. Um, so I'm going to um, heat up a couple of tortillas. Uh, and let's think what else we can put on the taco. You know what? I have an idea, actually. Uh, this would go well with like chopped lettuce, just a little bit to add some volume, and uh, sour cream. I'll show you what I like to use for sour cream. So this is as easy as it gets. This is uh, unsweetened plain yogurt made from cashew, cashew milk. This is from Trader Joe's. There is a a very similar in flavor, maybe even identical, honestly, um, brand called Forager. They make yogurt just like this and a top just like, you know, looks just a different, um, different label. I, uh, for me, unsweetened plain things like, you know, yogurt is like a big deal because I grew up in Russia and over there, like, dairy products, the fermented dairy products have been like a huge deal my whole life. And we didn't really add any sugar or any fruit to them. And even if we, when we did, we would also sometimes just go for the unsweetened plain version, either yogurt or there's some other things. Um, yeah, and so when I went vegan, obviously, you know, there was no longer anything like that available to me uh, because most plain yogurts that I could find would still be sweet. So, you know, you can't really use that on, you know, tacos as sour cream. But when I found uh, this brand or Forager, they're like identical, maybe even made by the same people, who knows? Uh, so th this is like amazing. I'm going to show you what it looks like on the inside. So one down, down, oh, what's, what's the word? Drawback is that the texture, like some would consider kind of weird, like it's kind of goopy and shaky. But, you know, the nice thing is that once we just shake it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it real good, all of that goopiness disappears and it becomes just perfectly beautiful, plain yogurt, you know, plop. Maybe it's not that appetizing, maybe it's like ploppy things. But anyway, so I'm going to put this on my tacos with the soy curls. And now I need to heat up my tortillas. So a little trick for heating up tortillas. If you're making a few of them at a time, like say when I make tacos for my family, I usually make seven uh, or eight. This way I'll have three, my husband will have three and our daughter will have one or two. She just eats plain tortillas. I know she's really weird like that. But anyway, uh, if you're heating up a few of them at a time, the best way I find is to stack them up and wrap them in a paper towel, in a wet paper towel, like wet it and squeeze it out and put it around it. And then microwave for maybe like 45 seconds. And they're nice and warm and just very soft and pliable. Just perfect. I'm just going to have one. No, I said two actually. Yeah. Let's do two of these. I'm not going to bother with a paper towel. I'm just going to put them on a plate. Like, is it big enough? Yeah, 
I think it's fine. Yeah, so I'm going to put them on a plate like this and zap them for you know, like 15 seconds. Let's see. There are also tortilla warmers that you can buy either with a store like Bed Bath & Beyond. They always got some kind of you know, gimmicks, chachkas like that. I have a tortilla warmer. I'm not sure. Yeah, don't remember where it is. It's made out of terracotta. So the same material as some flower pots, you know, those pots that if you're not gentle enough will break. Um, yeah, so that, that one's pretty good. I put tortillas in it and then put it in the oven and heat the oven up for till maybe like 330 Fahrenheit or so. And as soon as the oven, like I put them in a cold oven when the temperature comes up, then gets to 330, then they'll warm enough. Anyway, so we've got the tortillas. All right, they're nice and warm. I'm going to stack them like this. Let's see. I got a lot going on here on my table. Maybe move some of this stuff and get my taco filling. I just, I just can't get enough how nice that looks, doesn't it? Anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll move the camera so you can see this a little better. I'm going to, so I'm just stacking them up like this. There we go. And I'm going to put some amount, as much or as little as I want. I want to try to make sure that I got both peppers and onions and and the soy curls, obviously, on both sides. You know what? I should have probably chopped up some lettuce or something. All right, well, we're just going to do it without. That's fine. You can totally at home. At home, you can put on anything on, on the guacamole or just sliced avocado or um, shredded vegan cheese. Like It all works really well. Okay, and now I've got... Let's see. You guys see how pretty that looks? Yeah. I kind of wish I had another camera to take pictures of it. <laughs> All right. And now I'm just going to drop some plops. I hope it's not going to look really off putting <laughs> after that. Mm -hmm. If you're not a fan of sour cream or yogurt on, on your. Um, Tacos, no big deal. You know. Or if you just don't have this kind of stuff or not into it, that's totally fine. Okay, so there we are. Our little tacos. Yeah, here we go. Let me move the camera again. No, different way. There we go. Okay, let's see. Can you see this? Okay. All right, so I'm going to give it a bite. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Good stuff. You can feel the crunch from the vegetables. And that little, you know, savory accent from from the chicken broth and the perfect texture of the soy curls themselves are just spot on, honestly. So, yeah, so this is my first episode. I'm so, so excited, guys. I think it went better than I thought it would. I thought I'd be like a nervous me mess the whole time, but it turned out it was only half of the time. All right. So I'm planning to do this every Friday at 11 a.m. If you are on my mailing list, then I'll let you know about it. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll also know about it. 
Um, I have put all the links of what I used, all you know, my social media and whatnot in the comments here. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Thank you so, so much for coming live. And folks who are watching this later, thank you for watching me later. It's, it's just fantastic, I think, since we're doing this. Okay, so have a great day. I've got a trip to the DMV later today, so that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, so have a good day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.